Hey, good morning. Welcome in. Fantasy Sports Today on the air here on Sports Grid. Great to be with you. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. Our fantasy football previews team by team continue today. We'll take a look at the Carolina Panthers in 2022. We've got preseason games tomorrow night. And Davis, naturally, a lot of information for the NFL as well, including a couple of injuries today on training camp. And what's happening is that teams right now are working out against each other before they play in the preseason games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So uh, interesting video coming through as well. All right, we'll get back to Davis in just a second here before we get into some of the injuries. One of them in particular was interesting with Cleveland. It was uh, Jakeem Grant, the great returner and wide receiver. Ian Rappaport of NFL Network reporting he is out for the season also in Tampa between Miami and the Buccaneers practice. Russell Gage left with an injury as well. And so naturally those are two injuries that we'll have to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, Let's get to our headlines here on the show. As we continue on here on this Wednesday morning, we've got big news in terms of the NFL, Frank Gore. Obviously this is not something that you want to see. Domestic violence issues here and being charged with an incident back in Las Vegas a couple of months ago. Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, says essentially he believes that Watson should be suspended for longer than six games, maybe even up to a year. We'll find out about this before the season begins. Shohei Otani wins. He also homers yesterday. And Sean McVay gets a contract extension, as he should, with the Los Angeles Rams, bringing them to a Super Bowl champion last season. But Davis, let's get back to the field here in terms of training camp. We've got a lot of teams that are facing off against each other on the field in a real game on Thursday, but what we're getting are the practice reports as these two, as a lot of teams are playing against each other before they actually play in the games on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, I think the joint practices are sort of interesting, and we've heard a couple coaches say this. Uh, Doug Peterson, the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach, was saying this. He's like, you know, for a lot of this stuff, new head coaches, you know, getting to know their quarterbacks, getting to know their offenses, I mean, they they can work on all this stuff in practice, and they can kind of have it all there in theory, but they don't know what it's going to look like when the other team doesn't know what's coming, right? Or when they don't know what the defense is going to be doing or vice versa. So one of the things that Doug Peterson said was Trevor Lawrence is going to get, you know, a couple series in their first preseason game. And I think a lot of these first preseason games, the team that's traveling to play has been doing joint practices. So I, I think we're going to get a lot of good information for fantasy football from these joint practices and from these games. Probably most importantly, who is playing with who, right? You know, uh, you know, we've been making a lot of assumptions with ADP right. in terms of this guy's the first running back, this guy's the second running back, and so on and so forth. But I think we're going to know in some of these situations where it's been very murky, we're going to have the actual answer probably after this weekend. Yeah, let me hit you on a couple of injuries here. The Jakeem Grant one, I, I guess, is more is bigger for the Browns in terms of special teams. I always liked him, by the way, in Miami. I thought he wasn't used as much as, as he could have been. And then uh, Russell Gage, it's being reported, has left practice with the Buccaneers. Buccaneers may be the one team through two weeks, Davis, that appear to be the most hit by injuries. Maybe not ones that we use in fantasy, but losing offensive linemen and now losing maybe a wide receiver too. And it's pretty significant. It is, it is definitely significant, especially because Chris Godwin has been practicing, but they have not been, you know, full practices. It hasn't been like he's 100% cleared. There's no worry about his surgically repaired ACL knee. And, you know, I mean, they are relying on Julio Jones, who has not been a bastion of health himself. We are still, I believe it's 31 or 30 days away from the beginning of the regular season. So there's there's really no saying that 100% Julio Jones gets there healthy. And then, I, I mean, it's, it's also Mike Evans, 29. Mike Evans gets hurt every single year as well. Like, I mean, who knows what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to look like heading in to that first game of the season. I wonder, you, you do have to wonder, do you think Brady's been calling Gronk? You're like, hey, man, we're, we're, we're losing guys left, right, and center here. Godwin's knee is not where we need. Like, I need you. I need you for a month, buddy. Like, come and give me some snaps. Yeah, for sure. Could very well be. I don't know if you caught any baseball last night, Davis, but real exciting finishes between Seattle and New York as the Mariners win. The Orioles are staying in the race, too. And not to mention, obviously, the things that are going on around the league still very compelling. Shohei Otani even hit a home run and. I mean, Otani's like on the back page right now, Davis. It's kind of sad. You know, it is. It is kind of sad. You know, the things that people care about in baseball right now, I mean, obviously they care about the Yankees and the Mets going on in New York. They care about what the new look Padres look like. Manny Machado hit a three-run homer Mm -hmm. last night. Their offense really had not been very good uh, up until last night when they scored 
seven runs, but that is a lot of what people are focusing on. I'm definitely on, you know, the, the Dodgers pitching because it's not looking like they're going to have Clayton Kershaw back anytime, particularly soon. And they need to be thinking about that pitching staff as they head into the playoffs, you know, Juan Soto kind of settling in there in San Diego, the Blue Jays doing their best to try and scrape and find a playoff spot in that super difficult division. But uh, yeah, just, just sad to see Otani relegated to the back page. Yeah, it's pretty much what it's been thus far. I'm still keeping an eye, of course, on baseball. But naturally, for those of you who are watching our show today, you're probably wondering, where's my NFL season preview in fantasy football? Well, it is coming up next. Today, Davis and I are going to take a look at a very big season for the Carolina Panthers. Now, obviously, it's been an injury-riddled you know, season for uh, Christian McCaffrey the last couple of years. They have at least one new quarterback in tow and a bunch of really good skill position uh, players as well. A lot of ranges of outcomes. We'll see if we can get to the bottom of it when we preview that next. It's the Carolina Panthers coming up here on the show, so make sure you stay on the grid as Davis and I will be back in just a couple of minutes. What kind of season will Baker Mayfield have? We'll tell you next. Don't go away. Break, break. non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. Attention parents. If your child was born premature and later diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis, also known as NEC, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Certain types of baby formulas have been linked to an increased risk of newborns developing NEC, a severe and potentially fatal intestinal illness that oftentimes requires surgery. If your child was born premature or at a low birth weight and later diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis, the baby formula your child was fed may be to blame, and you may be entitled to significant compensation from the manufacturer. Call right now to find out if you qualify. Don't be a victim. Get the help you deserve. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-958-5083. That's 1-800-958-5083. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. From 1953 to 1987, veterans and civilians were potentially exposed to toxic chemicals in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Exposure to these chemicals increases the risk for cancer and other health problems. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with a serious illness after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-327-4629. That's 1-800-327-4629. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I call to get everything I deserve. I call to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I call to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-810-7576. That's 1-800-810-7576 now. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. And I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Grid. Our series continues as we take a look at the NFL and our season previews today. Make a stop with the Carolina Panthers, Davis, a team that obviously has a lot of talent. It's just they've had issues with injuries. They've had issues with the quarterbacking. And I think that people probably will forget this in a couple of years. But the Carolina Panthers brought Cam Newton back in 2021. We haven't heard Cam's name in, in a few months. Uh, but naturally, that kind of overshadowed some of the other things that happened during the season. Cam was you know, obviously serviceable in, in making Carolina like somewhat competitive over the course of the season. But they decided this offseason to sort of wait out the Browns. They did the right thing. They ended up getting Baker Mayfield for almost nothing. The only question becomes is uh, how much can Mayfield help this team this year? I mean, my opinion would be that he can help them much more than the quarterbacking play than they've had. And, you know, Cam Newton was a great player when he was in his pomp, when he was an effective rusher, before he started to suffer all these shoulder and foot injuries. But Baker Mayfield is a pretty good NFL quarterback. You know, for example, his career adjusted yards per attempt, better than guys like Ben Roethlisberger, better than guys like Andrew Luck, for example. You know, 7.3 YPA in the NFL is pretty strong. And he was very bad last year when he was playing with a shoulder injury. 17 touchdowns, 13 interceptions in 14 games. Uh, the Browns, you know, only won six games with him as the quarterback. But the year before, they went 11-5. and five. He won that road playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions for his career. 92 touchdowns 50, uh, and 56 interceptions with a 62% completion rate Baker Mayfield holds the NFL record for most passing touchdowns as a rookie so I am definitely higher than the market on what Mayfield can do both in terms of what he could do for their fantasy weapons and in terms of what he can do in terms of their win-loss record because this division right I mean the Saints like who knows what they're going to be this year they're going to be much more defensive focused the Buccaneers well, I mean we were just talking in the introduction segment about all these injuries they've suffered. They don't have Gronk. Who knows when Godwin is going to be back. And, you know, the Falcons are terrible. We talked about them last week. They're maybe going to be the worst offense in the NFL. And the Panthers have been horrid on offense the last two years. Last year, they were the 29th offense in terms of points, 30th in terms of yards per play. So the, the, the ceiling from where they are is very far away. All right, so let's take a look at the average draft position for the top 200 players that are on the Panthers this season. And we'll start with Baker Mayfield, who just is just under the top 200. So he's pick 196, according to the NFFC. Christian McCaffrey's ADP is number two overall. DJ Moore, wide receiver on the Carolina Panthers, is 45. Robbie Anderson, his ADP is 172. Terrace Marshall, his ADP is 272, which is, of course, outside the top 12, uh, top 200, excuse me. And then Tommy Tremble at tight end is 357. All right, so Baker last year, Davis, he threw for 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, and he was ranked 25th out of, I guess, is how many teams in the NFL these days? 30 or 32? I get confused. 30 30 32. Or- Okay, 32. So he he's bottom barrel there as far as that is concerned. So I guess the question is, you're sitting there at the end of the draft. Everyone's already taken their starter. Everyone is now taking their backups. Is there a chance that Baker finishes within the top 20 this year in fantasy? Because if so, there's a lot more interest in these super flex leagues and backup leagues. Like, is he going to be playable in a bye week? I guess that's probably the question we have to ask ourselves. You know, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to – One, is Christian McCaffrey going to stay healthy and going to be giving Baker Mayfield free points as a receiver? We saw this uh, at the end of Drew Brees' career. You know, Drew Brees could not push the ball down the field anymore, but he would get all these free points because he would dump the ball off to Alvin Kamara, and then Kamara would just be ripping off these 40-yard gains and scoring touchdowns. I mean, I I think that, uh, you know, at at one point in Drew Brees' career, like 50% of his passing touchdowns were Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas, and those guys were basically just doing all of the work for him. And what we know about fantasy now is quarterbacks who don't run, uh, you know, it's not they're useless, 
but it's just like there's no difference, right? There's no difference between Baker Mayfield and Kirk Cousins for your fantasy team. I mean, maybe Kirk Cousins will be a point and a half, two points better per game, but his weekly ceiling is going to be fairly low. And Baker has never been a runner in the NFL. Uh, He had 54 rushing attempts for 165 yards in 2020. He's got five rushing touchdowns, but you're just maybe, maybe uh, a point a game over the course of the season. You're going to get Baker with his legs and he hasn't, he's not going to magically start doing that. But, you know, if Terrace Marshall, who uh, suffered a concussion last year and just never really developed, he was playing behind Rashard Higgins and some of those veteran guys for them. If Terrace Marshall can develop and, and, you know, kind of give the presence of what the average second round wide receiver is. And if I'm right about DJ Moore, thinking that DJ Moore has been waiting for an explosion to be playing with a good quarterback for the first time in his career. I mean, there, as you said, there are real pieces on this offense. Like they could be, I think they could be a 10 win team if everything kind of falls perfectly. I, I think the big question here is I just don't think Matt Rule is a very good coach and that is uh that's a big problem in the modern NFL to not have a very good coach yeah a lot of people a lot of folks thought and I thought that Joe Brady his offensive coordinator was fantastic at LSU did Brady get another job anywhere else by the way I don't even think I've heard his name anywhere is he getting paid through this year or something like that I don't I I gotta search that um he is the quarterback's coach of the Buffalo Bills Joe Brady Um, is of the Bills. I I thought he was a really good coach in college. I'm shocked that, and he was interviewing for head coaching jobs, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, all right, let, let's take a look at McCaffrey's numbers. There's not a lot to look at here, honestly. He was hurt uh, three different times or two different times last season. He had 442 rushing yards, one rushing touchdown, 343 receiving yards. And, you know, obviously he just, you know, only playing seven games. And in one of the games, he only played a half. So he really played six and a third, essentially, of, of his games. And, I, you know, I, I sort of like your strategy, Davis, which is kind of go big or go home. Because if McCaffrey plays 15 games, then you have a really good shot of winning your league. But it's a big if. We've been down this road before in fantasy football with the David Johnsons and the Terrell Davises and the Jamal Andersons. Like, like we know this story. We've seen this story, Saquon Barkley. And, and, I, and I just kind of need some validation as to why anyone would think that he's going to be healthy over the course of the season. I want him to be healthy. I took him last year in fantasy, but it's, it's really hard. You have to convince yourself that he will be. Well, the first reason would be that Christian McCaffrey's injuries have not been uh, broken leg. Uh, torn ACL, right? They they have not been they have not been the sort of injuries that would end up cascading. Um, you know, he has missed time with an ankle sprain. He's missed time with a thigh injury. Uh, the the 2020 injury was an AC joint sprain, like not an injury that would tend to repeat. Like you know, with Julio Jones, for example, it's like the guy just injures his hamstring every single season. It's like he's got a hamstring injury for four years in a row. McCaffrey's are not the same. But the main reason why McCaffrey is still the number one pick in fantasy is if he plays 17 games, you are guaranteed that you just got the player who is going to score the most points in fantasy. The last two seasons that Christian McCaffrey stayed healthy, he led the NFL in touches. He led the NFL in yards per scrimmage. Uh, For example, his 2019 season, he had 116 receptions and then added 15 rushing touchdowns on top of that. Like the degree to which McCaffrey dominated, I mean, it is the same, it's, LaDainian Tomlinson and Marshall Falk did it more with touchdowns, but it is the same amount of just sheer, you know, just uh, domination over the other players. You know, for example, Derrick Henry's season that we all remember from him being so incredible was five and a half points worse per game than Christian McCaffrey's 2019 and 2020 season. So for me, it's just got to be, it's got to be McCaffrey. Yeah, no, it, it, listen, it's it's an interesting case, and it's a big decision that a lot of people have to make in fantasy. And if he misses a lot of time again this season, the, his days of being drafted in the first round, Davis are gone. Like, that's it. Like, I think this is – I think people are willing to do it again, but I just don't know how often they're willing to do it. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get into the wide receivers and tight ends, our Carolina Panthers. Previews continue here on the show. We'll take a look at DJ Moore, very, very talented wide receiver, where we should be taking him in fantasy this season. Don't go away. Are you?
Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-830-7360. That's 800-830-7360. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy, just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. Call 800-565-6178. That's 800-565-6178. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Our fantasy football team previews continue here on the show today. Davis and I are taking a look at the Carolina Panthers. Let's take a look at the average draft position for the top 200 players that you will be taking in 12-team leagues this upcoming fantasy football draft season. Baker Mayfield just inside the 200 at ADP 196. Christian McCaffrey, his ADP is number two overall. DJ Moore, his ADP is 45. Robbie Anderson's average draft position is is 172. Terrace Marshall, his ADP is 272. And Tommy Tremble, his ADP is 357. He actually falls outside the top 200, but naturally in two tight end leagues, or leagues where you have to roster two of these guys, Tremble probably going to be rostered. Okay, let's go to the wide receivers now. We haven't had a chance to talk much about DJ Moore. And Davis, naturally, at the beginning of the 2021 fantasy football season, if you look at the first three or four games, and and made predictions as in terms of breakout stars last year i think you may have dj more like almost or close to at the top he was off to a fantastic start uh sam darnold just had that lockdown on him he was just targeting him and throwing it to him every time i don't know what happened uh i i know that he was once 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 uh darnold was out that was basically it pj walker and cam newton were not targeting nearly as much and now he's got a quarterback that can throw the ball and throw the deep ball a little bit so hopefully DJ Moore's numbers improve off last year. I guess the question is, how much do you think they could? 10%, 20%? What are the range of outcomes here? 
Well, you know, if Baker Mayfield can be like the 16th best quarterback in the NFL, then I think the sky is sort of the limit for DJ Moore. For example, uh, Jarvis Landry's first season in Cleveland, so the first year that he played with Baker Mayfield, uh, he was really good. He had 149 targets, 81 receptions, 976 yards, and five touchdowns. And DJ Moore is like Jarvis Landry but way faster, way bigger, and way more effective after the catch. They run the same sorts of routes. They you know, both get some handoffs. They're both going to be used in motion. DJ Moore is capable of playing outside or in the slot, but he is just so great after the catch. If you look at some of his yards after the catch numbers in his career, he's like one of the best guys in the NFL once he has been given the ball and is also really good after contact as well. And you can clearly see by, by just looking at his career numbers, 498 targets, but only 14 touchdowns. It's just a clear limiting factor of the offenses that he has played in. He has always been above average, both in his offense and in the NFL for yards per target. The 2020 season where the Panthers were just diabolical, he averaged over 10 yards per target despite playing for a five-win team who no one feared you know throwing the ball at all with that combination of uh you know all, all these different guys i mean there were there were xfl guys you know pj walker throwing passes out there and it didn't seem to matter so dj moore has just always been fine from a yardage and a ppr perspective but he's never been able to break into that elite portion of the wide receivers because the touchdowns have never been there you know you were just you're not going to finish top 10 at your position with single digit touchdowns or it'd be very difficult to right so if he can get to I, let's even say nine touchdowns this season for dj moore I, I mean 100 receptions is that out of the question absolutely not like i i think he is phenomenal so i'm pretty aggressively drafting him at the tail end of the third round i think he i think he could be a real value there all right well that's one receiver on the panthers and they tend to target three different receivers but the second receiver that we're going to talk about here davis was the butt of a lot of jokes in the first half of last year as Robbie Anderson had a rough first half of 2021. Not a lot of targets, not a lot of touchdowns. And naturally, you know, he's kind of at the point here where it's like there's a chance I think that Marshall could pass him in terms of targets and yards and catches. But he did end up scoring five touchdowns, bailing people out down the stretch as he started to get a little bit more active in the offense. He had 519 receiving yards and his ADP is 172 so this is like a late round pick no one is planning on starting Robbie Anderson going into the fantasy football season maybe he's your wide receiver four or, or a late three but essentially we've seen so much of him over the last few years why should we think anything different going into the season yeah I mean I think unfortunately Robbie Anderson is probably the worst fit for Baker Mayfield than DJ Moore is. You know, if you look at the guys who had success in Cleveland and the guys who didn't, of course, we all remember uh, Odell Beckham Jr.'s father making the video of Odell Beckham Jr. running free and Baker Mayfield not throwing him the ball. And then Odell goes to the Rams and has a bunch of success running down the field, running those same routes. And, you know, I mean, part of that, I think, was that Baker was playing injured. Part of that is, you know, I mean, we, we talked about that, that awful weather. Do you remember all those wind games in 2020 in Cleveland? Mm -hmm. But Baker is just not going to be as effective throwing the ball down the field. Those are the types of routes that Robbie Anderson runs. Now, will Robbie maybe have a couple games this season where, you know, he has four targets, two receptions, and two touchdowns? Certainly. You know, that's kind of just always been his game. I'm not really aggressively targeting Anderson at all, mostly because I just don't see, I see no path for breaking out, right? So he's heading into his age 29 season. I basically see no chance of him becoming like the guy you need to have to win your league. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe he goes crazy in week 17 or something, but he's got one 1,000 yard season in his career. He's got 28 touchdowns on 628 targets. You know, he's, he's a fine player. He's a contributor. And there will be worse guys that I will have on my fantasy teams this season mm -hmm. than Robbie Anderson. But I would imagine this Panthers offense is just going to be really largely dominated by two guys. And that's DJ Moore and Christian McCaffrey. You know, not going to surprise me if those guys score like 60% of the available skill position fantasy points on this team. They're just, they are, they get the ball so often and they are just so much better than their teammates. All right, and let's now move over to someone that's falling outside the top 200, but obviously 
if things go sideways for Carolina or a player gets hurt or they decide to sort of change things up, this name is very interesting in Terrace Marshall Jr., who really made no impact in his first year at wide receiver in the NFL, Davis. Naturally, we expect this this can't get much worse. I would assume it'll get a little bit better. And we also know that first-year wide receivers in the NFL, especially in an offense that's being run in a situation where your offensive coordinator has gone halfway through the season, you have three different quarterbacks playing. I don't know how, how you could have had any expectations for him, but he'll be somebody to watch, I think, as the season goes on. Yeah, I was pretty interested in Terrace Marshall. If you go back and look at that 2019 season at LSU, uh, you know, I mean, one of the one of the craziest college football teams you have you have ever seen. He was playing with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, and you know, kind of kind of held his own. 46 receptions, 700 yards, 13 touchdowns, and was was definitely a part of you know like a meaningful part of that team, the team that won the title, maybe the best offense we've ever seen in college football. I was pretty excited about him, and it really just did not happen at all in 2021. You know, he was playing fewer snaps than than Brandon Zilstra in some of these games. They were bringing in Alex Erickson to play. They were using two tight end stuff with Tommy Tremble and Ian Thomas. And he did, you know, to be fair to him, he did suffer a concussion in the middle of the season. And so, you know, just kind of never reintegrated himself in the offense after that. But I am willing... I think to take a couple stabs on him, particularly in some of these best ball leagues, you know, 18th round pick, um, you know, because I would imagine it would, the the team would like to have the cost controlled labor of Terrace Marshall playing instead of having to extend Robbie Anderson. You know, if you find out that Terrace Marshall is good, you have two more seasons of a starting wide receiver at a really cheap, really affordable salary. Maybe that allows them to dip into the free agency quarterback market. Maybe they sign Maybe they sign Jimmy Garoppolo next offseason. You know, they try the Baker Mayfield thing. It doesn't work. They give Jimmy Garoppolo some money. You know, it just allows them to be a little bit more creative with their team building. Because I think David Tepper, the owner of the team, he would love to have a competitive team. They've been terrible the entire time he has owned Mm -hmm. the team, right? And I think, obviously, you know, Matt Rule will probably be gone, um, which is, you know, which, again, is another weird wrinkle here is Joe Brady was the offensive coordinator for Terrace Marshall in college. And, you know, you have to imagine that was probably part of the reason why the Panthers drafted him. Then they fired Joe Brady. So just kind of just a weird, like, uh, 18-month career so far for Terrace Marshall. But I I do think he could be decent. Yeah, and a fair name to watch as you get to the end of your fantasy football drafts. Now, the Panthers had Greg Olson at tight end for the Carolina Panthers. They also had a guy named Wesley Walls back in the day, Davis, who was a pretty good tight end for them and was viable in fantasy. Uh, but I got to be honest, this is a team that usually never has a good tight end. And I, and I don't know if that changes this season. Uh, Tommy Tremble steps in, 180 receiving yards last year, one touchdown. Uh, you know, he he's basically not a, much of a factor going into the season. And for whatever reason, the Panthers have just never really utilized that guy outside of having Olsen, again, who was fantastic, maybe even a Hall of Famer. But I, I'm, I'm just not feeling this position for them this year. Are you? No, it's it's been a long time. I mean, Greg Olson's last really good season was in 2016, so that was what seven seven years ago. So it's been a long time since you've wanted to have a Carolina Panthers Senate. I guess Tremble is sort of interesting just because he's a pretty athletic guy. He was, uh, you know, a decent player at Notre Dame. They kind of used him in some creative ways last year. And Ian Thomas actually is one of the guys who just got injured in training camp. Uh, reported that out of there today that he has a quadriceps injury. So. You know, Tremble probably heads into the season as a full-time player, but I don't I don't think we will probably be rostering him in most of our leagues. All right, so there you go. Any sleepers on this team, David, before we close it out? Backup running back to McCaffrey, got to be drafted, whoever that is. I mean, Dante Foreman last season for the Tennessee Titans looked a lot better than Dontrell Hilliard and the other guys they were using, and they signed him to a one-year $4 million deal. Pretty interesting if McCaffrey gets hurt, I think. I think he definitely is better than Chuba Hubbard. Yep, and it needs to be added in every league and drafted in every league as well. That's our Panthers preview. Coming up next, we've got fantasy or reality, so stay on the grid. We'll expand our conversation a little bit more into Christian McCaffrey and get some predictions for the 2022 fantasy football season. We'll be right back.
If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or been diagnosed with another asbestos-related cancer, call now. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be able to receive compensation without ever going to court or filing a lawsuit. Thousands of hardworking men and women have been diagnosed with mesothelioma because manufacturers put profits ahead of safety. Manufacturers knew the risks of asbestos exposure for years, but knowingly manufactured and sold deadly asbestos-containing materials, putting millions of American workers at risk. These manufacturers have tried to avoid compensating their victims, but the courts have ordered them to set aside an estimated $30 billion in trust money for the victims of asbestos. Call now to see if you're entitled to a portion of the $30 billion. You could receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because... It saved my mother's life yesterday, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-450-0515. 1-800-450-0515. Are you over? the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from leading financial firm J.D. Melberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now. Because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-273-2815. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. Call 800-273-2815. That's 800-273-2815. Call now. You heard a screech outside at night, but you can't see what it is because there's not enough light. You need the Bionic Floodlight from Bell & Howell. The solar-powered, motion-activated, multi-directional floodlight. The versatile, wireless, safety, security, and outdoor lifestyle light you'll love. And right now, it's yours for just $29.99. And the shipping is free. Order now, and we'll send a second Bionic Floodlight. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-604-7066 or order online at bionicfloodlight.com. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. Make sure you are following us on social media on Twitter at Sports Grid, at Sports Grid TV for the latest news, notes, information, picks against the spread, which of course will include a lot of discussion this coming weekend, Davis, in the NFL preseason. I'm starting to see all these lines out now over on FanDuel and everywhere else. It seems like we're right back where we were a year ago. Totals in the low 30s. Either team, either way, kind of favored by two or by three. You know, preseason's really tough to pick. Yeah, preseason is tough to pick. I mean, you kind of need to to look between the lines a little bit, see which team. You know, sometimes if a team is like a new head coach, we saw this with the with the Raiders and the and the Jaguars, right? Where uh, McDaniel's really wanted to win his first game. That kind of played out. Now it looks like maybe it might go the other way a little bit. Seems like the Jaguars want to win this week so maybe you'd look at them three-point favorites over the Cleveland Browns who like uh I mean the Cleveland Browns what a, what a tornado it's got to be inside their coaching room right now because they don't know what's coming you know maybe maybe ownership has an idea of what's coming because they've been in communication with the league office but I would guess that Kevin Stefanski is not you know getting calls from Kevin or uh, Roger Goodell's you know associates every single day so like who knows what they're doing like we, we probably won't see Brissett we I mean We'll see, like, whatever fourth-string offense the Browns have to run out. Yeah, we will. All right, let's get started. It's time for some fantasy or reality. (music) 
All right, Davis, today we previewed the Carolina Panthers in 2022. And no question for fantasy football purposes, the key name going into the season, as everybody knows, is going to be Christian McCaffrey, who has lost basically the last two seasons due to injury. There are 17 games now in the regular season, and we're going to play a game of fantasy or reality with McCaffrey's games played going into the year. Fantasy or, or reality, McCaffrey Davis will play more than 12 games this season. Yeah, I got I got reality mostly because I'm just really hoping that this is true, uh, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, if Christian McCaffrey plays less than 12 games, I will be super bummed out because I've been drafting him all summer like he is the number one player in fantasy in all these best ball drafts. But also, as I was talking about in segment B, you know, this is not a guy with the same chronic recurring injury you know that's when I, I start to worry about guys I also really worry about uh running backs with foot injuries so you know Derrick Henry had the Jones fracture in his foot last season I mean you definitely are going to worry about that but like I mean at, again as I said earlier one of the seasons McCaffrey missed was a shoulder injury which is just like I don't it just happens right football is a violent game but I uh I got I got uh, reality here I think he he's playing all 17 I'm manifesting it all right. I got reality too. I, I don't think that he's playing 17 and, and I'm not going 16 either, but I'll go over on the 12. I, I think that he'll probably miss you know a couple of games here and there over the course of the season. I'm also not as just, you know, optimistic as I would say that those injuries that he had in the past won't recur again. Davis made some good points earlier in the show. There were no bone breaks or anything along those lines, but muscular player, muscle inju injuries, soft tissue injuries just tend to come back. But McCaffrey at 14 games or even 15 games is better than anyone you can find in the second or third round of fantasy football, too. So uh, I got over that in 2022. And by the way, with Matt Rule coaching, you know he's getting that same volume. Rule talk. He talked down that volume last year, but the second they put McCaffrey in, he had all the volume going into the season. So I got over as well. All right, Deshaun Watson, again, back on our fantasy reality one more time. We got word of the suspension by the independent judge over a week ago where he suspended for six games during the regular season. The NFL is now appealing this and Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL says that for the predatory activity, Watson should get a full year suspension. So we're going to ask the question here as well. We know that the range of outcomes is six games, essentially to a year. Will they meet in the middle? Will Goodell just basically drop the hammer and do what he can because he can, he's the commissioner of the NFL fantasy reality. Deshaun Watson will receive, a one-year suspension from the NFL. You know what? I think reading the tea leaves, and this has kind of been my opinion the entire time. You know, I'm not really drafting Browns players in fantasy. I've definitely not been drafting Watson. Now, I actually think the NFL's overall preference, you know, I don't I don't want to give uh, you know, the National Football League as a as a multi-billion dollar business a ton of credit because if these allegations were true but no one cared. You know, if there was no public pressure, if this was not a widely reported story that was, you know, even leaving the sports world, but was, you know, making the front page of the New York Times or whatever, if this was, you know, back page stuff, the NFL wouldn't care. They would have just gotten the independent judgment and they would have said six games, whatever, no problem, right? But because we are in certainly a very different era, a different time, uh, we are, we are, you know, uh, evolving and changing all the time. Uh, I, I got reality. I, I think pretty clearly the NFL wants a big suspension, but what is maybe even the more important element of this and the reason I feel more confident is not only does the league office want this, but Craig, the other owners are pissed. They saw this six game suspension. They saw the way the Browns worded his contract and they were like, this is not fair. You pay him $1 million against the cap this year and then get four more years of this guy who roughly came in as being underpriced like no way like if I'm the Carolina Panthers if I'm David Tepper who tried to get him if I'm the Atlanta Falcons who tried to get him but you know wasn't clear the legal situation they just view that as unfair that the Browns are getting this huge discount basically that they were not willing to give so it's it's going to be a year because all the other 31 owners they also want this to happen yeah, I'm going to go the other way here. Uh, I'm going to guess that this is somewhere in between six games and a full season, which essentially makes everybody and nobody happy. But I think that no matter how many games the NFL adds on to the six, it makes the commissioner look good. And I think that that's probably end game here, uh, unfortunately, in the NFL. 
Uh, I, I will say that it is it is not the full 17, but it is also not the six. I'm going to put it somewhere around 10 games in some sort of agreement between the two sides for 2022, which more or less still derails his fantasy season, which still more or less derails the Brown season, which kind of puts them in a position where we know that they're not going to benefit from having him, but also makes everybody in the agreement happy, but unhappy to a degree. I got somewhere around 10 games, maybe 12, comes back at the end of the season in a meaningless year for the Cleveland Browns. But uh, six, definitely not going to be the number, I don't think, going into the year two. So those of you who did not draft Deshaun Watson, you, like Davis said, you probably had the right idea there. All right, Hard Knocks debut last night on HBO, of course, streaming over on HBO Max. This time around, it is the Detroit Lions and Dan Campbell, and some of these clips have made their way, obviously, to the Twitterverse, no question, including singing of Billie Jean and some other things. Fantasy or reality, Davis, you will watch the rest of Hard Knocks this season. Yeah, uh, I got I got fantasy here. I mean, one the one thing I realized is um, this comes on after I've put my phone on Do Not Disturb mode and I, I read before bed. You know, that's just kind of my routine. That's like, uh, this is such a crazy part of the year for me. You know, I'm doing I'm doing all these drafts for, for best ball. I got to set up my main event drafts. I got to work on the projections. I got to make sure my rankings are done. You know, I'm still trying to play DFS. Obviously, this year, the added complication of uh, planning a wedding and taking a vacation in the middle of it that I, I just like my media uh, consumption in general is like way down. Like I, I did, I wait, I watched the end of Stranger Things, so I watched the eighth and ninth episodes of Stranger Things. But uh, you know, I, I, I was like in the middle of watching Ted Lasso, haven't finished it, uh, haven't watched Better Call Saul. Like just oh. like some of these, some of these big, uh, you know, so these big cultural happenings. Like I just haven't got there. Like I just have not really been uh, watching a ton of TV, mostly because my nose is buried in my phone trying to draft as many best ball teams as I can before the season starts. So Hard Knocks, Hard Knocks has not made the list for me. So I got fantasy here. Yeah, I did not watch it last night. And so to say that I would watch the rest of the season, uh, I'm actually going to go reality here because I do think that I will mix this in at some point. But unfortunately for me, like Davis, just given the time of the year and the things that are happening, it is really hard for me to commit the specific time that this comes on. I would tell you that on, and so so this is a reality. I, I do think I'm going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it on their time. I'll watch it on my time whenever I get a chance, treadmill time or, you know, just sitting around doing nothing. But Davis, interesting phenomenon for me outside of sports. Uh, and, and this is going to happen for me twice this week, actually, which is like a, a huge deal for me. So Monday night when Better Call Saul came on, I watched it live. I literally, I was wow. like, I am not taking any chances and I am not going on social media or anywhere else. And at 9 p.m. Eastern, I was, I was at the TV, watched the commercials through the, I had, it was, my wife was like, what are we doing? Why don't we wait? I'm like, I am not waiting. I do not want to hear anything about this. And I want to watch the whole thing through and did that. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to do the same exact thing for the Derek Jeter documentary, The Captain, because somebody you know is in it. So I'm definitely going to be watching those two and two two things live for me on television. I don't think I've done that in a yeah. year, and I got two in a week. I can't even remember the last television show I sat down. I I think probably the last like appointment viewing I sat down watched it live. I was there. It was on the calendar. I think it was the How I Met Your Mother finale. I want to say was the last time I sat down and watched there maybe. There was there were probably some Game of Thrones in there, Game of like Thrones uh, the, fir the, the, fir yeah. the first couple series of Game of Thrones when it was like a huge deal. I think I probably you know watched it on uh, on HBO with with some of my buddies or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a long time since I have you know flipped cable on to be like oh I got to be there at eight o'clock to watch X Y and Z. You know because it's it's just so easy now. Like you don't even have to just avoid like even even you know like the the ones I'm most interested in aren't even on TV, right? It's, it's the Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. Like, you don't even have that option. Mm -hmm. There is no watching it live with commercials with everyone else. You just wake up in the morning, and it's updated there on your on your Disney Plus app, and off you go. Yeah. No, I, and, and I think that's part of it. But I was, I was so – and Better Call Saul was fantastic. But I, I was so adamant about that show not getting ruined for me 
that I got news for you next Monday night, I'll be doing the same exact thing. There's no yeah. way that I am missing that finale. And look, could I, could I jump in at nine ten Eastern and then, you know, miss the first 30 minutes of commercials and get a chance to forward through that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I probably could, but I am just so scared to, to, to get that show spoiled. I really am like th this to me has been, one of the better maybe the best show of the last five ten years for me so i, I do not want to have that ruined for me on monday and then obviously tomorrow night with the captain i think that i don't want i, I don't i'm gonna i have a feeling i'm gonna have it ruined by people texting me and stuff but definitely want to catch that live as well all right so that's fantasy or reality for the day don't forget you can check back with us here tomorrow we have another edition of the show so looking forward to delivering that to you and also our season previews continue tomorrow we go from the carolina panthers and Davis, tomorrow we have the Chicago Bears. I know that's your favorite team. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be really disappointing, I think, to talk about the Bears because we we could have been talking about you know they spent a second round draft pick on some wide receiver and you know they uh, they they spent some free agency money. Maybe they maybe they were the team that overpaid Christian Kirk. Right. You know maybe they were the team that brought in you know literally anyone interesting. And of course they went the exact opposite way. They hired the defensive head coach. They let Allen Robinson go. They, you know, draft a 29 year old. Like it's just, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a little bit of a of an aggravating discussion tomorrow. I think. I think probably so, but still some compelling pieces that you may want to take in your fantasy football draft. Coming up next is the Sports Grid 60. We'll be right back. Hi folks, Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your social security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your social security check every single month. Call now. I call to get everything I deserve. I call to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my social security check. I call to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare coverage helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-810-7576. That's 1-800-810-7576 now. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-268-1371. That's 800-268-1371. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. From 1953 to 1987, veterans and civilians were potentially exposed to toxic chemicals in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune. Exposure to these chemicals increases the risk for cancer and other health problems. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with a serious illness after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-327-4629. That's 1-800-327-4629. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call right now for your free book, and as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. 
Call 800-830-7360. That's 800-830-7360. As a reminder, right here on the show tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock Eastern, catch our preview of the Chicago Bears. Davis and I will take our first look at the fantasy football average draft position for all of their players and give you a season preview. Now let's turn it back over to Davis for today's Sports Grid 60. So yesterday there was a big lawsuit, uh, the first of many, many, many. There are going to be lots of lawsuits between the PGA Tour and the Live Golf uh, Saudi Arabian Consortium. And the PGA Tour won their first injunction. So basically it was about these three guys who wanted to play in the FedEx Cup playoffs, but they have joined the Live Golf Tour, of course, the PGA Tour, suspending anyone who has played in a Live Golf event. The PGA Tour wins. Um but I think it's very interesting because there, the, the, and of course, it's a complex legal thing. I can't summarize it all here in 60 seconds, but I will find the future of this very interesting because, you know, I mean, we, we have all sorts of the stuff that are going to impact other leagues in the United States as well. But uh, whoever wins that obviously stands to inherit, you know, a multi billion, billion dollar business. So I'm just very curious to see how the rest of these PGA Tour versus Live Golf Court cases go. Yeah, we'll all have our eye on that, especially with the FedEx Cup on the way. Uh, yesterday, a player on the Pittsburgh Pirates, his name is Rodolfo Castro. I don't know if you saw the highlights of this. Kind of flew under the radar a little bit, but he was running to third base. And as he was sliding into third head first, his cell phone popped out of his pocket, landed onto the field. And the third base coach from the oppos opposing team said, hey, you may want to grab your cell phone. It came out of your pocket. Now, it's probably nothing egregious, and it probably was just an accident. But it is going to spark some questions again. Should players be having access to their cell phones during games, in the dugout, in the clubhouse? I don't know what the answer is. I don't personally think it was a big deal. But make no mistake about it, folks. It's coming again. That'll do it for our show today. Thanks, of course, to our friends at LTN. And, of course, Andrew, our producer, filling in for Brett today. For Davis Maddock, I'm Greg Mish. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be back here at 2 o'clock Eastern for Newswire. Great, great.